A train of tandem box kites, each one precisely put together from Lawrence Hargrave's original design. It takes me about 40 to 50 hours to make one of those. Um, there's not a lot of material cost, it's just hours. Patiently waiting for the perfect wind conditions. These aviation enthusiasts are hoping to repeat history. We're going to reenact the uh, famous box kite experiment of 1894 where on the 12th of November Lawrence Hargrave became the first person in history to achieve heavy and air vertical liftoff. And it was one of the great breakthroughs in um, the development of the oral aeroplanes. After two failed attempts, somehow it's suddenly my turn. And maybe it'll be third time lucky marking the first successful reenactment since Lauren Hargrave lifted off here at Stanwell Park in 1894. Up I went, helping to celebrate the sky-high legacy left here in the Illawarra. With a road already named in his honour, the Lawrence Hargrave Society now has its sights set on the new Western Sydney Airport. I don't see how you can argue against Hargrave's being named there. Uh, he's an absolute pioneer, an original thinker, and without him we wouldn't have been advanced the way we did. The genius of Lawrence Hargrave encompassed so many fields. But his most enduring legacy was his incredible experiments in heavier-than-air flight. Ahead of his time, he paved the way for the invention of the airplane, for which the Wright brothers owed so much to the ingenuity and experimental achievements of Hargrave. Lawrence Hargrave was born in Greenwich, England in 1850. Immigrating to Australia with his family at the age of 15. He arrived in Sydney on the 5th of November, 1865. Hargrave began to research the problems of flight in 1882, making careful studies of the flight of birds and insects. He constructed a number of monoplane models between 1884 and 1892, employing several methods of propulsion, including a compressed air rotary engine developed by him in 1889. In 1893, after confirming the superior lifting qualities of cambered wings, he began experimenting with kites. Hargrave is best remembered for the introduction of the cellular kite, or box kite, as it is now known. When Judge John Fletcher Hargrave, Attorney General of New South Wales and Lawrence's father, passed away, Lawrence took over the residence in Stanwell Park and gave up paid work to study the science of flight full-time, a place which offered excellent wind and hand conditions for his experiments. It is here in Stanwell Park, New South Wales, on November 12, 1894, he was lifted 4.8 metres, almost 16 feet, off the ground by four box kites of his own construction. He used models to demonstrate that a vertical tailpiece increased stability, and he built and flew a variety of models, some of which were powered by compressed air. Hargrave visited England in 1899, where he read papers describing his work and exhibited his models. The box kite, which was a significant step in the evolution of biplane aircraft structures, represents Hargrave's most important contribution to the invention of the airplane. A modest, unassuming and unselfish man, he refused to patent his inventions, wanting only to add to the sum of human knowledge for all to share. 
Hargrave's work inspired Alexander Graham Bell to begin his own experiments with a series of tetrahedral kite designs. However, Hargrave's work, like that of many other pioneers, was not sufficiently appreciated during his lifetime. An honorable exception was Professor Richard Threlfall who, in his presidential address to the Royal Society of New South Wales in May 1895, spoke of his strong conviction of the importance of the work which Mr. Hargrave has done towards solving the problem of artificial flight. Threlfall called Hargrave the inventor of human flight, and the debt supposed to be owed by the Wright brothers to Hargrave. Lawrence Hargrave was a truly remarkable man. When he modestly linked four of his cellular box kites together and added a sling seat, he not only propelled himself 16 feet off the ground in front of a skeptical public, but wrote himself into the history books forever. For on that day, the 12th of November, 1894 on Stanwell Park Beach, in a wind speed of 21 miles per hour, Hargrave became Australia's founding father of modern flight, and in his own unselfish way, opened the doors to countless other inventors and pioneers. Hargrave gave his discoveries freely, to anyone that wanted them, paving the way to the future of air travel. The debt that is owed to this man is significant, and his legacy will always be remembered as a pioneering aviation legend. Something all Australians should be proud of.